Alright my fighters, so today we are going to talk about the change to the tier list and the fact that characters are going now to start having ultra abilities in PvP without being ultra characters. But before we start, if you are new here and you want to stay updated with everything new about Dragon Ball Legends, make sure to subscribe my channel and, tur and turn on the notification bell beside it. And if you enjoy the video, make sure to hit that like button. Now without any further ado, let's just get started. So as you can see, the change is going to be implemented on the 6th of uh, of April and basically this is this change is going to be implemented on two different tiers tier Z and tier S the other tiers aren't going to get actually any uh, any changes or adjustments so basically if we take a look at the first one tier Z before Zinkai awakening before adjustment it was actually inflicted damage up plus 40% strike and blast defense up plus 35 percent after adjustment it will become inflicted damage strike defense and blast defense up 40 percent so they increased the strike and the blast defense up by five percent uh, and then per battle member with the same episode inflicted damage up plus 20 percent so basically you can see that you get 20 percent extra inflicted damage per bottle member who is actually from the same episode so if you manage to form a team of the same episode you are going to get up to 60 percent damage inflicted up and basically this is a magnificent increasement actually or increasing in the amount of buff that you get for the character and this is going to change a lot in the characters however the problem is that it is requiring episode not tag if it would have been tag it would have been 10 times easier actually to form a team that can take advantage take full advantage of this buff actually and create some really amazing teams of useless characters and make them actually useful in pvp however since it is requiring episode it's going to be pretty hard actually to form teams that can fully take advantage of this buff which i can understand they don't want actually to make teams that are already broken even more broken by making the useless characters as well in them uh, even more broken but it's not going to give that big of an impact on the pvp actually and on the meta if they aren't going to do that however we will see how this is going to work now which episodes could take advantage of this the episodes that i can think of are actually mostly uh, either universe survival saga uh, maybe a movie saga movie saga is actually the most used uh, episode to, so basically this might be actually the best one uh, and then universe survival saga and basically uh, it it could be even actually future trank saga maybe <laughs> since it has actually some really amazing characters however it is going to require the characters to be either in z tier or in s tier so if they aren't there they aren't going to receive the buff but the other characters are going to receive the buff so basically if you have one character that you are that you really want to use and it is in z tier you don't need to care about the other characters if they are useful already so if we use for example uh, ultra gojita together with maybe gojita blue and then if we have a, another character that is Sag sagas from the movies and basically uh, is uh, in the z tier you could use it with them and you will, you will still receive actually the 60% damage inflicted up uh, for that character. So basically it is going to become useful, but it's not going to allow you to use, I believe, many characters to, to receive this buff. So basically more than one, it will be hard to find actually another one that could be useful and make the team useful. So uh, it's... I believe it's not going to make that huge of an impact right now on the meta but the more characters we get and the more characters that's that actually falls in the Z tier and the S tier I believe that's when the uh, the real impact of this system is going actually to show up since 
the more characters we got from dif- we get from different episodes uh, the the more choices we will have actually to form different teams and basically by that we will be able to form useful teams from these useless characters and be able to take full advantage of these buffs but for now i doubt there are actually many characters to choose between that are in z tier or in s tier anyways let's take a look at the after zinkai awakening in z tier as you can see before adjustment it was actually inflicted damage up by 10% uh, after adjustment it is still inflicted damage up by 10% they didn't increase it by anything uh, and then per battle member with the same episode inflicted damage up by 10% so he so you can get actually up to 30% extra damage uh, it's not massive it's not that big of change but for a Zinkai Awakened character it should be actually a pretty good amount if it is a newly Zinkai uh, Awakened character or one of the absolute most broken characters so basically other than that if it is old enough character and it's not one of the absolutely most broken characters I doubt it is going to have actually that much of an advantage from 30% extra inflicted damage. Keep in mind the not Zinkai awakened characters are going to receive 5% extra at both defenses and 60% extra damage. So basically that is a much higher <laughs> <laughs> difference than what the Zinkai Awakened characters are getting. They are just getting 30% inflicted damage without any increasement in defense and it is actually half the increasement in uh, damage inflicted that uh, th than the uh, than what the normal characters are actually receiving so basically you can see that the difference is very big between them and i doubt that zinkai awakened characters are going to take big advantage of it but it's still actually much better than before before it was just 10 percent extra damage <laughs> like seriously <laughs> <laughs> that was just hilarious so now at least it is 40 percent extra damage if you actually manage to form a team of uh, three different characters from the same episode then we have the s tier the s tier before adjustment for characters before zinkai awakening was actually inflicted damage up 30 percent so 10 percent less than the uh, the z tier and the same thing for the strike and the blast defense up, it is actually 10% less. Then, after adjustment, inflicted damage, strike defense, and blast defense up by 30%. So again, they increased it actually by 5%. And per battle member with the same episode, uh, inflicted damage up by 10%. Unfortunately, this time it is actually even less, but uh, you can understand that because the S tier characters are supposedly better than the Z tier characters, and therefore they don't need as, as a huge actually buff as the Z tier characters are going to get. But I believe that 60% extra damage is going actually it it might make actually the z tier characters even better than the s tier characters with their 30 percent extra damage but it's a still actually a pretty magnificent uh, buff so we will see how this is going to change because basically the s tier is going to have many more choices i believe uh, that are going to be good to choose and are going to help you to actually form a team that is useful from these characters but it's still going to be as i said before hard because of the fact that it's not going to have enough choices to choose between anyways the tier s after zinkai awakening before adjustment inflicted damage up eight percent so basically the difference is just two percent <laughs> <laughs> this is just crazy after adjustment inflicted damage inflicted damage up uh, by 8% and per battle member with the same episode inflicted damage up 5% are you kidding with me this is this is so so bad like seriously bad this is extremely useless what are they going to do with 15 extra inflicted damage? Like seriously, they are already just getting 8% and 15, that will make it actually 23%. Uh, what are they going to do with that? 
<laughs> like seriously <laughs> this is just the same as the strike and plus defense up for the tier s before zinkai awakening <laughs> like seriously <laughs> this is just hilarious this isn't going to help at all actually it's going to be better be than before obviously because that is 15 percent extra damage but it's not going to help at all not at all it would be 10 times better if the character is actually z tier since it's going to get 30 percent extra inflicted damage instead actually of uh, s tier which is going to get only 15 percent they should have actually made it 8% again. Just like the Z tier, they made it 10 and 10. They should have made actually the S tier as well 8 and 8. Why did they go with 5? Like seriously, I just can't understand. Anyways, <laughs> they just wanted to kill the Zinkai Awakened characters in tier S. Anyways, as you can see here, what are tiers they are describing it? They are actually different tiers in case you don't know that uh, buffs your teams depend the all of the tiers except for the feature tier are actually based on the usage of the characters and then we have the feature tier with which actually includes the characters that are new and the characters that are newly Zinkai awakened and they stay in that feature tier up until four, uh, four seasons of uh, PvP. Uh, and then they actually leave it either to the C tier or to something else in case they aren't used enough. Uh, and sometimes they actually just go to the A tier no matter how much you use them. <laughs> Anyways, as you can see these are the buffs of the tiers. Nothing changed as I said before other than the Z tier and the S tier. They didn't change the, f the feature tier, they didn't change the A tier, and they didn't change the other tiers as well. So basically, right now I believe they are actually, uh, they are experimenting with it, because impl implementing it on only two different tiers is actually experiment they will see how it will be they will see if it is going to have an impact on the on the meta how how huge that impact it is is going to be actually and how people will respond to it and then they will actually either stop there or they will actually continue with the other tiers as well and they will make them better in some way so basically this is pretty much everything for this one uh, as you can see here, uh, there are actually all of the characters listed, but here it is hard to know which character is which, so it's better to go actually to the PvP section and click on boost characters and there you will see the characters and wh which, uh, ta which uh, tier they are in actually. So that is going to be a 10 times easier way for you to know the characters and their tiers. So this is pretty much everything for today let me know your opinion about these changes to the tier list in the comments section below are you happy about them or are you sad about them and why and yeah basically i hope that you enjoyed the video and if you did please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends so that they can enjoy it too and if you got any useful information from this video or if you enjoyed it make sure to subscribe my channel and turn on the notification bell beside it so that you stay notified with everything new about dragon ball legends and with that being said see you as always in the next video of dragon Ball Legends.